Professional gamers have a superpower, an ability that sets them apart from everyone else. But this superpower doesn't only exist in esports, it's the same powerful ability that divides good athletes from world class athletes, average students from high achievers, and novice chess players from grand masters. In fact, the chess master Alexander Alekhine seemed to have this powerful ability, because in 1933, Alexander set a new world record, simultaneously playing 32 chess matches against other skilled players, forcing him to keep track of 1,024 different pieces, 2,408 squares, amongst 32 different chess boards. Oh, and the most impressive detail is that he did all of this without looking at a single board. But how? How does one simultaneously keep track of 32 chess matches without even seeing the board? How does one mentally process all that information? Well, this secret power is the same thing that allows pro gamers to play at such a high level. It's an ability that they have developed over time, and something that they are continuing to develop with powerful strategies. Strategies that most average players just aren't using. So let's break this all down, and let's start by taking a quick look at exactly how Alexander Alekhine was able to pull off such amazing feats, and how you can apply the lessons from his accomplishments in your own esports journey. As Alexander Alekhine was growing up, he developed an intense passion for chess. He spent much of his waking life dedicated to playing, studying, or just thinking about chess. And at one point, he would actively make it his goal to become the world chess champion, the absolute best at one-on-one -on -one chess. But as a young man, he stumbled into a big obstacle, school. Because when he was in class, it wasn't exactly an option to bring in a chessboard and play while the teacher taught. So he decided to do the next best thing. What he would do is entertain himself by thinking about chess positions and developing strategies by playing through matches in his mind. Now at first he aided this thinking by drawing diagrams and taking notes, but as he improved as an overall player, it became easier and easier for him to just do it in his head. And eventually he would start trying out blindfold chess, a method of playing against others without an actual board. And among good chess players like Alexander, this extreme version of chess really wasn't so uncommon. And for Alexander, it seemed that as he developed his skill for one-on-one -on -one chess, his ability to play blindfold chess just became natural and easy. And from there, blindfold chess became a natural side strategy for playing when there just wasn't a board around, or playing when he needed to handicap himself against a less skilled opponent. And over time, as he challenged himself to play blindfold chess matches, he slowly built this secondary skill until he was able to play against more and more players at the same time. But this doesn't mean that Alexander is one of only a few players who can play simultaneous matches of blindfold chess. In fact, in overall history of blindfold chess, we find that most players who worked hard to become chess masters found themselves able to play blindfold chess with little or no additional effort. They seem to naturally be able to track tens or even hundreds of chess pieces in their working memory, an ability that defies what we know about the human mind. You see, because the human mind is constantly focused on only a few things at a time, the working memory is designed to only hold two to four chunks of information at a time, and then when we need to take in more information, it basically hits the reset button to make room. So, how exactly then is it possible for chess players to surpass the limitations of the human mind? Have they developed some sort of advanced memory that allows them to absorb and process all information at a faster rate? Well, this is the exact question that researchers wanted to tackle. So beginning in the 1970s, researchers sought to understand how grandmasters remember chess positions with such accuracy. And so they tested a few different players, including a national level chess player and a novice level chess player. And they tested them on two types of boards, one that had pieces arranged in patterns from a real chess game, and the other with random placements that made no actual sense in the context of a game. 
Now when showing the chess boards with the pieces all laid out in patterns from real matches, the masters could remember about two thirds of the positions on the board, while the novices could only remember about four pieces. Then when shown the chess boards with pieces arranged randomly, the novice chess players did somewhat worse, getting only around two pieces correct, which honestly is no surprise. But what was surprising is that the Grandmasters didn't do much better. They were only able to get around two or three pieces right. All of a sudden, the experienced player's advantage completely disappeared. And so what researchers learned from this and from similar studies is that the chess masters don't develop some incredible memory for individual pieces on a board. It isn't as though they can suddenly memorize and process all information at a faster rate. Instead, their memory and processing power is context dependent. It relies on patterns of the sort that would only appear in an actual game. But what does this all mean for you? Well, when you're in a game, there are tons of changing variables to take in and keep track of, and your working memory is responsible for all of this. It analyzes that incoming information, processes it along past knowledge, and does so in order to predict future outcomes, develop possible plans of action, and ultimately make decisions. But the working memory can't hold on to a lot of information at once. yet. When it comes to complex situations of the game, there can be up to hundreds of subtle variables that you need to process in order to make an effective choice. And this is what's so powerful about patterns. Each of these patterns organizes several variables into a single chunk of information. And each pattern or chunk of information is then stored in the long-term memory, thus freeing up the power of the working memory to absorb and process more information. And this is why we're able to process so much information without even realizing it. Our mind is able to see patterns of information that are already known to us and then simultaneously hold new information in the working memory, while the long-term memory does most of the work behind the scenes. As an example, consider the act of driving. While you're behind the wheel, you need to analyze tons of different factors from weather conditions to the velocity and direction of each car around you, the traffic signs, pedestrians, the position of your foot on the pedals, as well as monitoring the precise motion and strength needed to press the acceleration. And if you've been driving for a while, then you're likely able to drive with minimal effort, sometimes even daydreaming while just driving home. Meanwhile, your brain is processing all these different variables without you really being aware of it. So the power of pattern recognition is to essentially automate information processing by identifying patterns and making predictions instantaneously. And of course, that's what sets pro players apart from average players. It's their ability to see more patterns, to process more information. This is what allows them to see more potential moves in any given situation. They're essentially playing out each potential outcome and then devising which move is best, all in a matter of seconds. So if you want to make effective predictions, you want to make pro-level decisions and process tons of information at lightning speeds, then you need to develop your pattern recognition. So then the question becomes, how exactly do you develop your pattern recognition? Well, your mind is always in a sort of predictive state, predicting the most likely future that's going to happen. And for example, I'll give you three numbers in a pattern and let you guess what the fourth number will be. Two, four, six. So based on the given numbers, you likely thought of the number eight, as in the next multiple of two because your mind is always collecting the current information, connecting it to past experiences, and attempting to determine the most likely future based on it. And even consider what it takes during an intense 1v1. In real time, you need to predict the most likely offensive and defensive strategies of your enemy. And based on their behavior, positioning, and available moves, you must predict their next step so you can effectively counter them or prevent their escape. Now in this scenario, you're making preemptive decisions based on past experience and current information. But of course, our minds are not perfect and they often predict futures that don't actually happen. 
For example, when giving you the number pattern, I could have said 2, 4, 6, and then 10 instead of 8, as in some sort of Fibonacci type pattern that combines the two previous numbers to get the next. But based on your past experience, you knew that the most likely future was one where I said 8. Similarly, in the 1v1 scenario, you may have unreliably predicted that your enemy was more vulnerable than you expected, so you start chasing after them only to get baited and destroyed by offensive abilities that you didn't even take into account. And this brings us to a very important point, your capacity to predict outcomes and make effective decisions is a skill that you learn through experience. Patterns are basically just the relationship between cause and effect, or actions and outcomes. So every time you make a prediction, you're analyzing available information and taking action. And then based on the results, you can determine if it was the correct prediction or incorrect. Thus verifying the pattern or forcing you to reconsider the variables and looking for a more accurate pattern. Thus, through trial and error, you begin to better understand the relationship between cause and effect in a given scenario. You learn to notice new relationships between subtle factors until it becomes a cohesive pattern. So this means that pattern recognition is basically just a natural process that doesn't require anything more than diving into new experiences, taking action, and automatically learning from the outcome, right? Well, yeah, kind of. The process of developing your pattern recognition can in fact occur automatically with experience, just not very effectively. To effectively absorb the information and lessons from your matches, to identify and internalize new patterns, you need to be actively searching for key lessons to extract from every game. And then after each game, you need to use the power of recall, journaling, or visualization to make sure those lessons actually sink in. And the absolute best strategy for developing your pattern recognition is something that I'm going to be exploring in a lot more detail in the next video. But as an immediate takeaway, I urge you to enter every game with a sense of purpose, priming yourself to look for new patterns and obvious lessons. Then during the game, make mental notes of key scenarios where you made a prediction and things either went really well or really poorly and immediately consider what factors contributed to that result. Pay attention to small and subtle variables that tip the scales. And if you can get a death recap or watch a kill cam, then do so and learn from it. And then, of course, at the end of the game, recall those major high points and low points, considering what you did right and what you did wrong. And if possible, write them down and mentally make sense of the causes, variables, and effects. Now most players just kind of jump from one game to the next without a real sense of purpose and without making conscious effort to learn from every situation. It's as though their brains are basically on autopilot and their learning ability is essentially turned off. And this is why so many players hit skill plateaus and only achieve a low rank after years and years of playing. But by actively searching for and pondering the lessons of every match, you'll internalize new patterns at a much faster rate, allowing you to make better decisions, process information faster, and become a much better player. So absorb the key lessons from this video. Realize that the superpower that allows chess players to process so much information is a superpower that you can develop in your own domain. And the biggest factor is simply to pay attention to the actions and their outcomes while searching for the many variables that contribute to the result. And don't underestimate the power of this, because the difference between actively searching for patterns and recalling them versus just passively playing is the difference that separates players who plateau at bronze from players who keep climbing to the very top. So consider which of those players you want to be and enter every single match, including your next match, with a sense of purpose, a determination to learn new patterns, and a focus on developing the superpower of professional players.
Hey guys, I hope you loved this video. And if you did, then don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. And if you weren't aware yet, we have a fairly new Discord server for all of the eAthlete Labs super fans. So if you want to join the community, then check that out using the link in the description. And of course, this video is brought to you by our very own esports supplements, eAdvantage. Now, eAdvantage is designed to help you get better in-game results and help you to improve your skills faster, and it does this by giving you a focus and energy boost, one beyond any sort of typical energy drink, and of course it does so in a much healthier way. It essentially combines beneficial ingredients that you might find in an energy drink, but adds even better brain-boosting ingredients to it, and then packs it all into a small capsule. As a result, you get a huge focus boost and even a memory boost in a much healthier and even cheaper way. And there are tons of eAthlete Labs fans that have been using eAdvantage and we've been getting amazing feedback from it. One fan even sent in an email mentioning that he was able to climb three ranks in two weeks, nearly double his accuracy, and start getting 29.63% more kills due to eAdvantage. So if you want to give it a try and see how much it helps you improve, then use the code EATHLETE13 to get 13.5% off your entire order. The link for eAdvantage as well as this code will be in the description down below. But if supplements are not your thing and you still want to help support the channel, then grab yourself some eAthlete merch. You can now get a custom eSports jersey, a mouse pad, or even a hoodie so you can start repping eAthlete. And every single merch sale really does help us out. It helps us allocate more time and resources to every single video. So not only will you look great with the merch, but it really does help us out. And the link for the merch store as well as a discount code will also be in the description down below. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.